The educational system in Mexico consists of three levels, primary, secondary, and higher education. Former basic education compasses preschool, elementary, and lower secondary. Basic education accounts for approximately 81% of the total students receiving school services. Federal, state, and local governments provide 93% of basic education, while private schools provide about 7%. Early education is said to be compulsory. According to estimates from Secretary of D-Education, uh, Pelika, or SEP, enrollment for children aged 6 to 14 years stand at about 92.8%. However, only 48.68% of those between ages 15 to 19 attend school. Additional constitution amendments made it a legal obligation for parents to send their children to elementary and lower secondary schools. The head of the National Institute for adult education say a frightening number of Mexicans can't read and write, and that 45.7% are poorly educated. There is a younger problem. More than half of Mexico's 15-year-olds are said to be below international standards in basic math and science skills. The new legal framework adopted in 1993 under the new federalism continues to charge the federal government with the task of determining study plans and programs for schools. Additional constitutional amendments made it a legal obligation for parents to send their children to elementary and secondary schools. Under the provision of the 1983 general education law, the federal government through the SEP continues to oversee the general implementation of education, but the states are, are given complete responsibility for administering basic education, including indigenous and special education and teacher education. Preschool is not mandatory, but it is available for children between the ages of three to five. The situation in rural Mexico deserves special attention if the fight against poverty in Mexico is to be successful. The agriculture sector is the sector with the lowest schooling levels. Only 0.7% of the urban population is employed in the agricultural sector. In the rural areas, more than one-third of the population perform farming activities. Of them, 23.7% re register only one to three years of schooling whereas 22.7% does not have any type of schooling. In total, 79.2% of the rural population employed in training activities register a maximum of completed primary education. President Ingrid Prino Nitro recently passed an education reform bill that puts a stop to corruption in the educational sector. Previously, teachers could sell their incumbent position or have a family member inherit it. This practice attributes to the low literacy scores in the nation, one of the lowest of the 34 countries in the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, an organization primarily consisting of countries in Asia, Europe, and the Americas. Elba Astor Gardilla is the leader of the National Education Workers Union. President Pino Nitro has stated that both the arrest of Gardilla and the signing of an extensive education reform into law were meant to combat the excessive authority and corruption found in the teachers' union. Education has been problematic for many developing countries. How and when will these governments accept the need to implement a real reform for true education? They cannot solve this, this situation with desperate attitudes. The rise in Mexico were disastrous for them. U.S. President Barack Obama announced on May 2, 2013, the formation of a bilateral forum on higher education, innovation, and research. The initiative aims to offer greater education and economic opportunity to students from both countries and create a workforce for mutual economic prosperity. The United States and Mexico are deeply integrated. Economical trade and investments have expanded rapidly, but education has not. Mexican students prefer Western Europe to, US, to the U.S. where many feel discriminated against. President Obama plans to take a new direction in the federal agenda for higher education and and research between the U.S. and Mexico in hopes of attracting more Mexican students to study and work in the United States. Before the Spanish arrival in 1519, Mexico was occupied by a large number of Indian groups with very different social and economic systems. In general, the tribes in the arid north were relatively sm small groups of hunters and gatherers who roamed extensive census area of sparsely vegetated deserts and seas. These people are often referred to as the Chim Chimix, though they were a mixture of several linguistically distinctive cultural groups. The U.S. and Mexico share similarities. Mexico and the U.S. are both North American nations neighboring each other. Both are trade and business partners belonging to the North American Free Trade Agreement, NAFTA. 
and have a pretty large and complex history, including conflicts such as the Texas Revolution 1835 to 1836 or the, and the Mexican War 1846 to 1848.